Big smoke. Sit up at the body, read them and get madder than They all of them are so blind, now make me so sad. We are them up, we are up, we are them up. Me see them a try to make you believe in them. Policy. What them a do are using them brain was strategy with them media and advertisement industry. Them say no, mother earth you raise economy. Bobby, Bobby, all you get the get the get the Bobby, Bobby, all you get the get the get the Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. All you get to get to get to bubble, bubble. All you get to get to get to bubble. Who dem a try to fool? I'm a need nothing more. Too much love. Hey guys, nice to see you again. You having fun? Maybe you're doing some fun things at home. You've had a good week back at school. It's the weekend, and you know what that means. It is time for bubbles. And here is another great workshop with all the incredible things that you can do with bubbles at home with me, Sam Sam Bubble Man, your bubbleologist for today and every Saturday at 10 a.m. I'm here to show you amazing things that you can do with bubbles at home. And today's lesson is gonna be all about big bubbles. Do you like big bubbles? The first thing that we need to talk about is your bubble solution. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a recipe on our website. Uh, you can go and have a look at the website address. It's down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and that will make some bubbles, but if you really, if you're gonna make big bubbles, if you wanna make big bubbles and you wanna have a lot of fun, the quality of your bubble solution is paramount. The most important thing when you're making bubbles, the secret's all in the mix. So I really recommend you get hold of some professional bubble solution. Today, we're using Super Pop, this is my own recipe. I've been making it for about 25 years. I've been improving it, it's really good. And it's a concentrate. So you mix that bottle with three parts water and it'll make you two liters. Keep going for absolutely ages and it'll work in any bubble toy. So that's what we hold our world records with. Good stuff. Next up, we're gonna to have to think about what we're gonna to use to make the bubbles. Coming up in a week or two, I'm gonna do another workshop Again, released at Saturday morning, 10 a.m. BST, about DIY, make your own bubble toys at home. But for now, I'm gonna show you this. This is my favorite go-to bubble toy for giant bubbles, and it's really good for a lot of different reasons. The main reason is it's incredibly mobile. Normally, when we're making giant bubbles, we need a bucket, like this. And then that's on the ground and you keep going back to your bucket and it's kind of a static thing. And that's fine, but there's something very nice about being able to make bubbles on the hoof. Because for this one, the scabbard is the bucket. It's more like a bottle, really. And you dip the sword into the bucket, into the bottle, into the scabbard, push the button on the handle, and that's gonna open up your wand like that. Now, once you've got that there, you could do a number of different things with it. You can blow bubbles. You can wave it. Or if it's windy, you can just hold it aloft and let the wind do all the work. However, today it's nice and still, so we can't really do bubbles like that. But that's fine. We're going to work with what we've got. And that's another thing. Making bubbles outdoors. It's really all about the weather. You might notice we're outdoors today and uh, I'm very grateful for having a garden. I'm very sorry if you don't. I hope you can get out and make some bubbles now. If not now, then soon. But uh, yeah, I wanted you to know that if you, are, if you don't have an outdoor space, then do go and have a look at my previous two videos because this, they're all about indoor bubbling and my next ones will be as well. Big bubbles tend to get a bit messy, so if you are doing this indoors, you really have to put something down on the ground to soak up any drips or grabs that fall out from the bubble solution. 
that could present a slip hazard. So be very careful when you're making big bubbles indoors unless you've got something to put down on the ground, okay? So to start off with, you always want to keep the sword upright, of course, because it's not spill-proof, this toy. The bubble guns are spill-proof, but the swords are not. And if you turn upside down, the solution is going to come out, even if the lid's screwed on, okay? So always keep it upright, it's number one. You can tip it a little bit like that and that. The second thing is, how much bubble solution do you want to put in? Now, at the moment, if I take the sword out, it's up to about there, which is fine. You can fill it up to about halfway up the bowl without the sword nip, because when you put the sword in, the bubble solution is going to go up. And without the sword in, once it gets down to about here, you're going to need to top it back up again with your super pop bubble mixture, okay? Once you've got your bubble solution in there, like I say, you push the button to open up the wand, and there's a lot of different techniques and things that you can do with this. Mostly we're going to talk about tubes or spheres. So take your bubble sword, I'm going to do this without a bubble at the moment. I'm going to hold it aloft and you're just going to make a shape like a hill. Like that. You're going to draw and then you're going to make another one. Okay? So it's a bit like an N shape or a hill. However you want to visualize it, it's fine. So I'm holding it so it's, ver it's, it's perpendicular to the ground, which means it's the same angle. And I just make a hill. And again. Now, you might notice that I'm not even closing the trigger. I like to avoid closing the trigger with these as much as possible because, again, it'll put undue pressure on the surface of your bubble and might pop. You can close the trigger and that's an easy way to make a complete bubble. But you hear that little click sound? So every time you hear that, you might even see it. A few little drips fall off from the wand and it makes means that your bubble's more likely to pop. You're not gonna get as many bubbles from one dip. And I like to get as many bubbles as I can from one dip. So I tend to avoid closing it most of the time. In fact, if you want to close it, you could just close it most of the way. You don't have to close it completely. Generally, I use other techniques to complete my bubble. Thank you. So that's one way that I use to close my bubble by making a hill shape. Another way is by twisting the sword. So let's say I'm making a bubble like this. I can twist it with my wrist and it completes the bubble. So twist it with my wrist. So you're basically just doing that you could do it slowly if you like. Don't do it too fast. You might pop it. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Try that at home. I think you'll find it's a great technique. Just one quick thing about the weather. You'll notice it's a lovely morning here in Tottenham, which is where uh, Bubble Ink is based, and me, your bubbleologist. Um, a couple of important things. Generally, when you're making big bubbles, you want a reasonably high humidity. We're quite lucky in England. We generally have quite high humidity, as opposed to somewhere like a desert, which is the worst place I've ever had to try and make bubbles, was the Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi in about 2008 or nine, I think it was, when we opened the racetrack there. And I had to make bubbles at the, it's, it's literally in the desert. And the humidity there was 8%. I've never seen it so low before. Generally in England, you're gonna get it above 50%, which is okay. The higher, the better. Today we've got a lovely morning and it's about 75%, so it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit about weather. Also the wind, we've got very still wind today. As you can see the bubbles aren't flying around too fast. They're being pretty still. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a breeze, but it's very light. Now that's much better for making big bubbles and a really strong wind, which might pop your big film. So we were on spheres, yep. Yeah? So we've got a, did a couple of ways of completing your spheres. There's the hill shape, 
so you can go all the way around. Count your bubbles, see how many you can get. I think we're on about 9, 10, 11. We've got twisting the ones, and we've got closing the ones. Those are all good ways to complete your spherical bubble. Now, if you want to make tubes, much easier to do, really. There is still a couple of really nice bits of technique that I would, I would recommend. Number one is, let's say we're going to make a bubble rainbow. Now, a bubble rainbow is a lovely looking trick. It's where you start over here with your bubble wand and you bring it right the way over your head. You keep your arm nice and straight, chest open, and you make a lovely big rainbow shape like that. Here it is with the bubble. I'll stand back a bit in case you couldn't see that all. Now this is one of my favourite moves because when you open up like that, it feels great. You're making something so beautiful and it, it and the physical movement is is a really good feeling. It almost feels like a kind of therapy sometimes. Maybe we don't realise that we crouch over it perhaps like this. I don't know. When you open up it can feel really good and you get to make something so beautiful it's a bit like painting the sky a couple more tubes you can do this is a really nice one i call it the 360 and that's where you open the sword again you could twist it a little bit if you like just to close the aperture and you go all the way around see if you can come back to your starting point without the bubble popping the key to this is to keep it smooth you don't want any jerky motion. The jerky motion is more likely to pop your bubble. Here we go again. We go all the way around, nice and smooth. Make sure your bubble doesn't pop on you. And there we go. We've gone once round, twice round, three times round. Whoa! So that was not just a 360. That was a 720. A. Can you do the maths at home? Do you know you're 360 times stable? I'll give you a clue. It's more than 1,079. So, that's a 360. Now sometimes, if you're really lucky, you might get the two ends to join up. It's quite hard to do. You could do it this way as well. Uh, let's try that once more. <laughs> this is tricky, this one. There we go. Just for a second, you see that the two ends joined up. Now that's called a bubble donut. Uh, another good movement that you can do. This is all about movement. So use your imagination. Um, for example, you could decide that you're going to be a samurai warrior and go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Make a nice whoosh, cut with the bubble. Bend your knees. Think Bruce Lee. Well, this is another really nice movement that I call the Loch Ness Bubble. And you just go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Kind of like a wiggly worm. On the small, sometimes you might even get a head. Let's put the head on it. There's the head sticking up out of the water. Great. Got that? What I want you to do at home is come up with your own movements. Use your imagination, give them a name. If it's windy, you can just hold it aloft like that and let the wind do all the work. I call that the Statue of Liberty. I hope you're having fun and enjoying your bubble swords and making big bubbles. A couple of other things that you can do before we move on to making even bigger bubbles is you can try this. Uh, we make start with one bubble and then we just slowly slide the sword through the bubble and it splits it in half. So now you've got two bubbles. We've got two bubbles there. And then the wind's blown them apart. One of the great things about bubbles is you can't blow an ugly bubble. So just get out there and play and see what happens. So here we go again. You take one bubble, slide the sword through that bubble until it splits into two. I'll try and do it a bit closer for you. A little bit of a breeze. There we go. Come up with a smaller bubble. Now if you go a bit faster, 
and go the other way, instead of coming up, like I was just doing then, drawing the sword through the bowl, you go down. Now if you go down, I want you to do it in the way, imagine that you're ringing a bell, like one of those automatic, old-fashioned, mechanical bell clocks. Okay, and then, if we take one bubble like this, cut it in half, like the, with the bell, moving, drop. Then we take a bubble like this with the bell movement we find that you can separate the two bubbles the one bubble into two bubbles or maybe even three bubbles or maybe one two three four bubbles you could just keep going see how far you can get this is actually a world record maybe you want to try for a world record so you can do it I myself have broken 12 Guinness World Records. Do have a look in the 2020 edition. I'm on uh, page, ooh, can't remember. You'll find me, I'm there in that page three times. See if you can find all three. And of course, do come and find me online, on social media. I'm on all of those things from TikTok to Facebook. And you can follow my bubble adventures around the world. And don't forget one more thing, uh, that you can see more videos on our website and all of these videos are going to be continually able to see through our blog pages on our, from our website and YouTube and uh, yeah we're going to try and release another video every week during lockdown <sighs> back to the bubble sword I want to show you one more thing before we move on to bigger bubbles and this is to do with bubbles inside bubbles which is another one of my Guinness World Records now, bubbles inside bubbles, there's a few different ways of making a bubble inside a bubble. I'm going to show you two of them today. The first one is quite straightforward and lots of fun to try. You start with a small bubble. Oh, I call this one the bubble wrap, by the way. You'll see why in a minute. And I want you to blow the bubble this time. Just from the film, like that. Blow a couple of bubbles. Try again. Now, what you want really is a relatively small bubble, say like an, a size of an orange like that and once you've got your orange sized bubble you're gonna wrap another bigger bubble around it and there we have our first bubble in a bubble the second way is a little bit trickier but oh when you get this down you're gonna love it I call it the bubbleologist's method and what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna start with a bigger bubble say like a basketball sized bubble or bigger and we're gonna blow on the belly of the bubble and try and push a bubble through the wall into the, into the middle of the bigger bubble. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got a nice decent sized bubble here. I'm going to catch it this time. Holding it from the top gives you a lot more control. And I push the air into the middle bubble and create bubbles inside bubbles. that now you could do this at home believe me it's not as difficult as it looks a couple of things to try little bits of technique really one you want to be thinking about how far away you are from the bubble when you blow into it the further you are away from it the harder you're going to need to blow I tend to be about, so far, what's that, about 10 centimetres from the ball of the bubble, maybe a little bit further back. Uh, and the other thing that you're going to need to think about is how you blow. I think to start off with, a good one to start off with is a kind of silent p, 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 like a silent p sound. You should watch my lips. I'm going to bring my lips right together and almost pull them into my mouth and then I'm gonna push them out and make a little puff of air at the same time. Puh, puh, puh. That's really good technique, that one works. I don't often use that thing these days, I just do a more of a like a call, more kind of like a puffing sound, like a kind of, like an old fashioned steam train or something like that. But you can come up with anything. Try the al alphabet, you can try different words. Sometimes I even just try making raspberries at the bubble like this. Anyway. 
Way. There we go. We've got a bubble in the bubble. So have fun with it. You know, it's all about playing. I'm really, really lucky to have such a job as this. And uh, you know, you could be a bubbleologist too. I mean, whatever your dreams are, do follow them. Keep at it. You have to get the, to do some other stuff sometimes. Maybe you have to do school work or whatever. Keep your passions safe and look after them. And maybe you'll get to be a bubbleologist too. You can even do it whilst you're making a bubble. Whoa, lovely dreams. It's one of the things I love. Another thing I love, 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 love about making bubbles outdoors. So it allows you to see what's happening with the wind. See what I mean? If actually, you can't see the wind normally, right? You can see it moving the trees. The trees are stuck into the ground. If these are floating. It means that you can actually see which way the wind's blowing. It gives you that kind of feeling of being in touch with the wind. And anything that puts us more in touch with nature is a good thing. That is the giant bubble sword and what a fantastic toy it is. I really so thoroughly recommend it. Don't forget to pick up some super pop bubble solution for whatever bubble toy you're using. This stuff is going to work wonders. And you can pick that up from my website. The address is below. Now I'm going to just show you one more thing before we... I've only, I've only got time to show you one more thing. And uh, I thought we'd make some even bigger bubbles and try and put somebody inside a bubble. Unfortunately, I'm self-isolating here at the moment, so I haven't got anybody to put inside a bubble, but I do have a willing volunteer. Meet Barney Barbecue. Now Barney Barbecue, you can stand over there. And I'm gonna try and put you in a bubble. Before we do it, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. Now this is called a super duper loop. You can pick these up from my website as well. And it's got two, st two strings created in a loop onto two sticks. Now, you're gonna need a bucket for this. So go and find a bucket and put your bubble mix into the bucket. You need at least a liter. Put the bucket down on the ground. And I'm gonna give you a few tips that you can do. I'm gonna move back so you can see the bucket. Oh, are you right to just hang on there for a minute? Awesome. So, when you take the sticks out of the bucket, it's really important that you keep the tips of the sticks together. And the same when you're going back in. The only time that you want to open it up is when you've taken the sticks out. You also want to keep your strings as untangled as possible. It's like I say, you can pick these up. We have two sizes of them. This is the bigger one. We do a smaller one. For the kids too. So you see I've got a nice big film now and I can make a really nice big bubble. Of course the bigger the bubble is the more likely it's to pop. And so a few things that you can do. Uh, it's kind of interesting what we've just done because with the toy that we've been working with with the sword it's a fixed wand really. It's not fixed totally like it opens and closes right but not as much as this. This one you've got much more control of. I'm going to tilt this a little bit that way. Got much more control of. So you can really change how the strings open and close. Let's see, I'm on my own. Let's tilt you down a little bit so you can see Barney. Everyone say hello, Barney. Barney, say hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, so here we go again. We've got the tips of the sticks, tips of the sticks together. We open it up. You can open it up a lot. You can open it up halfway. You can drag it through the air. You can turn it around. Just, you know what, exactly the same things apply with the sword as with this, just slightly different movements. So before when I was talking about turning my wrist with the sword, you do the same thing with this by crossing the strings over. So you could have them like this, and then you tear across one in front of the other, and it's going to complete the bubble. I'll show you what I mean. You're going to be expert bubbleologists by the end of this. So you go 
turn the strings around and I've completed the bubble. Let's see how big we can go. Stand back a little bit. Barney, I feel like your moment might be about to arrive. Move the bucket out of the way. Remember, anything that's dry is going to pop your bubble. Right, let's see how big we can get this one. Lovely. Now, I actually use bigger versions than this. And one of my world records is the world's biggest bubble. I also broke the record for the most people inside a giant bubble. Again, have a look on our website. There's loads of bubble information in there. There's a whole list of my world records as well. I've got 12 great records that I've broke. Mums and dads, you're going to want to try this too. It's such a lovely feeling to make something so beautiful. And when you want to close the bubble off, just slowly bring the strings together. Try and keep all your movements as smooth as possible. There we go, we've completed the bubble. And sometimes if you're lucky, you've got a willing volunteer, you might find that you can put a barbecue in a bubble. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try one more. Barney, are you ready for this? Three, two, one. Ooh. Tell you what, Barney, you just turn so your face in the wind, and you can look down the eye of the bubble as it's coming towards you. Ta -da! Barney in a bubble. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Sam Sam Bubble Man. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, fantastic bubble workshop do come and have a look at us online don't forget you can pick up some super pop at www.samsambubbleman.com i'm going to be releasing another video next week so tune in then until then thank you very much good luck and happy bubbling